So 2017 to 18, I was on a military deployment with the Marine Special Forces. And I'd come back from deployment. And after all the normal stuff, I'd get told, hey, your reenlistment's been denied. You have 40 days to exit service, essentially 40 business days. So I'm a father of a family of six, sole income pretty much. So I'm like, oh crap, like how am I gonna do this? My wife brings up, hey, I found this little niche. She'd been, she'd been bringing it up and I'm like, yeah, and at the time I was just so involved in the military, I didn't think I was gonna get out. And so when the decision was out of my control, it said, hey, you are getting out. I was like, why not, let's do it. And that's pretty much the decision I told her. I was like, let's do it. And she was like, are you kidding me? I was like, nope, we're doing this. Hi, I'm John with uh, the Beehive family. This is Buzz, our bus. We've been traveling for three years now on the open road. Hi, I'm Sean Ling. I'm Alexis. Matthew. Chloe. Lisa. And this is our bus. Mm -hmm. Hey, welcome to Buzz the Bus. This is our Fordmost room, kind of our hosting area, kids area, dinette area that leads into our kitchen. All of our kids have their own little space here. Uh, they all open up independently so that they can store their personal items right inside here. Additionally, we built in storage in their seats. So if they got big items, they can just drop it right down inside the here and they've got this entire seat as well as the depth to get inside it. And then furthermore, this desk complete will, completely will drop down level with these seats uh, as well as this side. And I have a piece of board that rides along these rails in conjunction with these and onward to these that I lay down and it becomes a huge guest bed to sleep on. So we haven't had to use it yet, but it's there for design uh, necessity. Right here on the bottom, we uh, use the uh, wheel wells. For the boys' side, we've got a whole bunch of Legos and uh, other like military toys and things like that. On the ladies' side, they've got their Barbie houses and other tool like games they like to play with. Uh, furthermore, all the kids have two storage baskets each. So like my son Matthew's got that Boy Scout handbook in there and just tons of storage. I wanted them to have their own space as well as their own lighting. So if they wanted to come up here at any time, they could do that. Uh, a little closer to the entryway, we've got what we call the green. This is usually things that are actively used every day. So drills, uh, the bits, uh, my workout bands, battery charging unit, all these storage behind there. Got all your uh, sunblock, your hand sanitizer, butane, any little bits of storage um, that we use, like I said, on the daily. So this is my kitchen, our kitchen. Besides me, everybody else cooks, so it's constantly a mess, so there's no judgment. The first part of our kitchen on this side is our desk. I use it for our video editing, the kids use it for homeschooling. Johnny uses it for homeschooling. I usually sit here more than he does. Underneath it, I have a majority of my apothecary and a lot of dried herbs underneath. I also built this bench recently. It holds my induction cooktop stove top. It's an extra stove top. We have a burn box that's in there and then my dehydrator and vacuum seal for all my herbs and processing of food. In addition to our home office area, we have these home base radio station for the kids. A lot of people see our kids at schooly events, at whatever event we show up to, and they always have a radio on them. This allows us to call them back whenever we need. So this is one of Jacob's little radios, and then we have bigger ones that are the adult radios. So that's a really good addition that we had. I definitely highly recommend that to schooly families, for sure. The next section that we have is kind of like a baking kids area. Right now, Chloe's baking a cake. I built this little container, I guess you'd say, or shelving over top of the convection um, oven so that we could hold our coffee items, our sugars, and our maple syrup and honeys. So in this cabinet is mostly for the kids. Um, actually, the top drawer is my tea drawer. So I have a lot of our dried herbs and teas in here. We have the kids' snacks, apples, and then the majority of our vegetables and produce. And then this one holds a lot of our jars for storing. And then the last one is their snacks slash cereals. And we have to keep a, a bungee because it's best living and it's never even. So that completes that part. Above that is our pantry as well. As well. Um, I have a lot of dried items stored in here. Snacks and things for the kids. 
pastas and more baking items. I built this rack that goes above the refrigerator to host and hold more of my infusions and shrubs and drink mixes. And then we have our breads and stuff stored on top of our refrigerator and our pull-out pantry shelf. So this summer we did a lot of canning and pre preserving of our um, summer harvest with our friends up in Vermont. So I have pork that's gr uh, ground and canned here. I have a lot of pickled items, sauces, and dehydrated items as well. And then of course store bite items that you need just in general. And then the refrigerator's an apartment size fridge with the freezer on the bottom. And it's packed completely full right now of meat from this summer. And then the size does pretty good for a big family. I mean, you can see I've got a lot of food in here. So yeah, I don't know. I don't think I would do anything different. I really like this fridge too. I like that the freezer's on the bottom because I don't have to go in there that often. You're just pulling your meat out for dinner anyways and that's usually for storage. So it's all access right here. And then it's short enough that I was able to build storage on top and behind it. So it was like, I've got a lot of space to use. We made up our own kitchen like cabinetry with two by fours and plywood and got a marine 15 by 15, which is that <laughs> out of this. You can't wash shit in a 15 by 15 sink. I don't know how anybody does the, the little bowls or anything. If you have a lot of kids, get yourself a big sink. If you love yourself, get yourself a big sink. You can do so much stuff with a big sink. The nozzle that we have is pretty good too. It's got the sprayer and regular hose. Um, we built it off so that we could have storage on the back. A bamboo drying rack. We had a metal one. It sucked. <laughs> The bamboo one is awesome, it holds everything really well, and it can travel like this with it loaded with dishes. My husband and daughter, oldest daughter, they built this with the pieces from the other rack. They just screwed a piece of plexi on there, sealed it up, and then attached these other racks so that it could hang. Generally, we have um, water, herbal infused water sitting out. We used to have a little water fountain spigot that had like um, another water filter to it, and it just was in the way, so we took it out. So the sink's really good. We have a pull-out drawer underneath that holds the majority of our cleaning supplies. And we have these leafs that go into the sink and allow me to have extra space. There's another one on this side that's bigger. If I can get it out. So you can do both sides with the leaf in it it's covered i have all the space to work on and or i can put one side in still have access to my sink depending on like what i need this is for the dogs so i'm not gonna pull that out this is our trash it looks gross but it's really awesome so what we do is and the kids haven't been following it this is trash that can't fit into the eco brick so this is an eco brick whatever plastic that they have they should be theoretically shoving into here so that all the plastics are condensed it dramatically reduces the amount of trash that we throw out weekly and it's just it's just easier um, it also helps out with you know trash and recycling as far as throwing out an entire thing full already of trash instead of throwing a bag out with an empty container and then most of the times we're composting depending on location if they have a compost bin we'll compost at their location or if we're out in the woods or something we just dig a hole bury all of our compost Coming into the work part of the kitchen, this is where all the madness gets. So recently I just put this up. So we had two baskets that were similar to the kids' baskets up here that held things. And then I redesigned it and built this so that it could hold all of my working herbs, anything that I need to use for cooking, yeast. I have all my tools that are hanging up here for easy grab, all my tools underneath for easy grab, uh, easy access herbs, whatever things are quick for kitchen cooking. And then again, same thing down here, there, and here. <laughs> We cook a lot, so it's consistently being used and the items are constantly being changed out and, and reinvented and figured out. So this is our stove area. We built a cover that is custom to our stove. It's got two finger holes, so you can walk out like a tray. Generally, if I'm going to cook outside, I use this to carry all my stuff or serve. It can also be used as a chopping block since it sits right on top. So it's, it's actually a really nice addition. I would definitely tell people that they should make one of these because it helped. That and the sink plugs were like, like what you need, especially if you're gonna be cooking a lot and if you're going to have a lot of kids and a lot of people in your kitchen. I definitely think having the capability of having more counter space is necessary. I mean, I butchered an entire, no, I haven't done the pig. I butchered 
about seven or eight chickens like right here on the counter like putting them away and processing them so having that space is definitely a necessity so we have a two burner propane stove and so far it served us pretty well sometimes it's hard to fit the larger 12 to 14 inch cast irons that i use with a smaller pot and that's why we have the extra induction cooktop to help us with if we need like two large uh pots going at the same time um, but two years it's worked great haven't had any complaints i love it and we use all cast iron, so like we built this to host all of our cast iron pans, which all of the kids put away weirdly. So that one comes all the way out. It has all of our pots, all of our serving dishes and things like that. And then going lower has most of my ferments for consumption. And sometimes there's some vinegar cleaner stuff over there as well. But that's generally where I keep my ferments and then like the baking items. In addition to the rack on top, we also built a lot of storage that stays up just because, like I said, counter space is key and there's only so many drawers you can put. So we put these racks up for our pot lids. They sit like this and ride like this. We use bungees. You just bungee them down so they stay like that. Our knives ride like this too. Everybody's always freaked out. Somebody's going to die from our knives. The only time they've ever fallen is right into the sink and the magnet is very strong, so I'm never really worried about it dropping. We have the drawers over there for the trash and the dog and the extra storage for dried items. And then these are the main working drawers. Um, we use them to hold as much items as we can, built in the utensils. This makes it easier for dishes to travel. And, oh, this is a tip, here we go. My favorite tip of them all, especially if you have a lot of kids and they're starting to get into chore timing or able to do chores. We go to the thrift stores and we let them buy all individual dishes so we know exactly whose dish is a mess. So that helps out with cleaning because every kid is supposed to wash their own dish and then Alexis washes the communal dishes. Lots of baking and cooking items, dried, and dried storage so we could live off grid for a long time. And then this is the baking drawer, which has just been restocked for Thanksgiving. All of our sauces and items that we use to cook with for flavor. And then these ones are both um, storage for tools that we use. So like I have a KitchenAid mix uh, meat grinder for when I process meats. I have a pasta roller. Oh, uh, I put it in incorrectly. Everything fits in its own place. <laughs> and then we have a magic bullet more storage for plastic and all of our items for putting things away. We try not to use as much plastic as I actually have stocked up in here right now, but it's inevitable sometimes. We do like these reusable bags. I don't really care for this one actually. The ones with the zippers are the best ones. They hold, they zip easy. And you don't have to worry about putting these stupid little slider things on that never work. So if you can, these ones are really nice, the reusable bags. So the door opens up as one door. You can see we drilled a hole in it to run a uh, power strip. This side loading port is for a TV DVD that's built into the TV. So we had to find a way to make that work. And that's how we did. Um, additionally, these are just magnetized on the top and on the bottom. And then on the side wall, side wall. So instead of having a bunch of hinges that I knew kids would absolutely break over time, just went with magnetism. This has a little hook on the back so that as you close it, it will join and it's shut for the day. Another part about the kids' areas is I wanted them to be comfortable growing up in a large family. I uh, 11 kids in my own family growing up. I wanted personal space. So one thing we dropped in was two three-prong outlets with two USB ports dedicated to just that kid. They've got unique shelves in their bed built to them as well as basket placements. Uh, we went with these movable lights because it just helps them in their bed wherever they're most comfortable at doing a project or reading at night. Uh, each kid has their own 10 inch fan adjustable so that they can get a nice airflow while they sleep because although we don't have AC, well we do and it gets redonkulously cold in here when we're plugged up, but the, the moving air has been the most awesome asset additionally gas props for the kids so that when they go to do their clothes that half opens up if they need to get from there or they go into here for that half they have click lights that turn on under each section so they can ah you know low light conditions they got what they need they turn it off close that half 
close that half, move on with their day. For Chloe, as well as Matthew, because those are the two that are currently up top, they switch whenever they would like to. We've got these little ladders built in, so they usually just kind of V their legs up, step up. They grab these little handles right here, and they swing themselves in the bed. Pretty neat. We put this uh, here for Nico, the cat, and he'll grab that, grab that as he's shooting up into bed, or he reaches up there and uses it as a scratch post as well. So that's pretty cool. Additionally, under the beds, we have tons of boxes. So we have eight of these under these beds and eight of these underneath these beds. They're labeled, so this one's Alexis's, but throughout them all, we have business boxes with equipment we still use for basic office supplies, arts and crafts, ones for each kids, uh, extra blankets and jackets, and just things that normally can be tucked away that we pull out for use every once in a while. And then slides right back in and the uh, hallway remains full. Um, and like you see, we use uh, a lot of just throw carpets to keep the general movement of uh, dirt down. And from right, like I said, down here, you can see the, the difference in creativity and personal aspects of each kid. So that's kind of cool. On this side, this was gonna be an indoor shower, but it turned out that the juice wasn't, wasn't worth the squeeze for us. So we went with instead storage because we have six people living on this bus. So we got the six towels that hang here on a normal basis. Underneath, you can see, are all of Sean Ling's preserves. There we go, there's the keyword. <laughs> preserves, that, and the, they're all the way back there. She's got outlets that are in use that are plugged into different objects. The Tagagi tankless hot water heater in the next room. All the dog food, extra storage, and yeah. So many things. So bathroom for me and Sean Ling and the family has kind of been the tricky spot. We built our own. So we have a urine diverter, which goes into a 16 gallon urine tank, but we use a composting toilet method for the other option. Each kid has their own little storage box that they kind of put their stuff in. They clean it. They should have cleaned it today actually. The top is general use, as well as many of these items. And you can see, we even just drilled a hole for these uh, hair brushes to go right down. We don't even have a door, that's the best part. We have a curtain. And then, uh, <laughs> uh, what, hair curling irons, some sticky stuff. And then we actually keep these because with the composting toilet, it helps if you can like push your compost around to kind of level it down instead of creating a mound in the middle. So we just reuse these, spread it out, and then just set it down there gently and cover it with some more mulch and just kind of keeps that level down until my son, who's responsible for taking it out, takes out the bag and gets rid of it. So this leads into the essentially master bedroom. I uh, found a mirror. I literally just got the strongest adhesive I could and I adhered it to there. Kids love it, you know, we just keep it clean as we go. <laughs> we had to put in a little extra uh, cloth here that we found, strictly for adulting, um, as well as filling in some of the cracks that I'll show you on the other side, because, you know, when it comes to adult time, you know, you don't need, you know, a kid catching a, a, a creek a peak of that. Welcome to my half of the master bedroom. So, put in a couple extra robe hooks here. This is actually the uh, main house laundry. We put everything into here. Jacob, our six-year-old boy, he uh, is responsible for backpacking this along with a couple other kids and us when we go to laundry mats. Um, but his job is he comes back with this. He throws it on top of everyone's bed, all their respective clothing. So I'll come back, I'll have all mine. I, I, my job to put them all away, but his job to disperse and get it cleaned out. And uh, we keep that hanging right here. Uh, additionally, I've got my hygiene bag. It just stays inside my little REI bag. Some belts. We have a closet. You can't see too well from that angle, but uh, we'll come back to that. Additionally, um, I've got a little headboard that uh, I built into both sides that we keep kind of our wallet on, things that you generally carry throughout the day. I've got my storage rack, two three prongs, two USBs, like I said, per person. Some stuff the kids have given me through the years. Additionally, um, didn't cover it up front, but I have these little side rails right here. But now what you don't know is all of our electrical lines run down here. I have easy access to them anytime. And I thought that was probably one of our coolest designs. Um, although we came in late with it, it turned out to be one of the most beneficial things because if I have any electrical problems, I can access every wire. Like it's not under floors, it's not in walls. So that's something I'd recommend 
um, if you're able to do. If not, hey, do your thing and uh, make it work. <laughs> Additionally, Sean Ling and I have 10 inch fans just like the kids that blow right onto our beds. Um, storage boxes, foot storage speakers, uh, MacBook, and a little pull up onto the uh, bed work platform. And we've got the Xbox 360 here, but most of the time it's used just for a DVD we might get from a red box or something. This is permanently mounted TV and uh, a mini wall window shaker here that is for I think 300 square feet which is just about the size of this bus cumulatively and it will ice this bus down so yeah I'll hand uh, furthermore we keep our shoes tucked up here right against the side walls of uh, one of the two 100 gallon tanks on each side so we carry approximately 200 gallons topped off which is massive uh, comparative to a lot of people, so our ability to boondock with a water supply is way up there. Uh, we also have this bifold, uh, extra dress shoes or boots, you know, cause, like we just went to the wedding last week. So it's great just to be able to flip that up, grab some dress shoes, and get on with your day. Oh, that's what it is. Again, another fire extinguisher. So if you notice, we've got one up front, one in the back, Another one all the way to the front front, just because, you know, you don't play around with fire. Not in, a, not in a space that's built out of wood and encased in metal, right? The biggest question that we get is why we sleep separate. I did a tour on our Instagram the other day, and I think eight people asked us why we sleep separate. Do we still get busy? Um, are we happy in our marriage? Lots of different questions. So we have separate beds, but underneath his bed is this leaf. This is the same leaf that goes up to the front section. If we want to put a guest bed up front, this also fills into this bed too. So we can put our mattresses together or we put a bunch of pillows in here and the kids and us, we all just cuddle in here for movie nights. So flipping to the other side of the master bedroom, this is the door, which has a bunch of storage. These aren't alcohols, they're all infused. Actually, I lied. Some of them are infused alcohol. Like this is grapefruit, is grapefruit infused vodka. I think I have some moonshine. Yarrow, like a bunch of different things that are in work slash tinctures that are um, being used, all the different medicinal herbal things that I can make <laughs> have been made. Um, and then they store and basically live back here. This is usually the finished products. This is our Tagagi tankless hot water heater. Uh, this is our command switch for our WineGuard 4G LTE, which we haven't hooked up fully yet, but that's our dish on top. We're looking into that. Uh, we've got our surge guard power which comes right in, uh, powers our AC panel, powers our AC to DC panel right here, and we've got our inverter charger, which goes down to our battery bank uh, below. 24 volt system, 400 amps, 10 hours. Yeah, so pretty, pretty hefty. All right, so like I mentioned, I am studying to be an herbalist, and I'm also studying permaculture practices and learning a lot more about gardening and herbalism in general. Um, when we first started the bus, I don't even know, I started with a few plants and then it just kind of grew and kept going. Everything on this table and on that little table are edible and medicinal. So that's like my little kudos to me. I grew everything that's edible and medicinal and we keep it with us on the road. Like I said, it travels in our bedroom when we're um, driving around. So we get to sleep in the jungle at night. This we just put in, um, this is storage right now. It's full of stuff but this is where our grill stays um, I built a I welded a big grill so that we could have fire pits and grills and eat out when we were doing like the schoolie festivals and stuff like that because last year it was really cold and everybody was freezing and nobody could have a fire because nobody had a, a grill above the ground so I built that one so that we could do that when we go out to um, events and then we store some wood in here we have the best storage on this bus this is um, two bays that go straight through both sides. They're eight by eight feet, and they store all of our outside, outdoor activity stuff on this side, and then the other side hosts most of our tools and um, gear that we need. So this is our little side table that we built off of the bus. It's just uh, one by twos pieced together and then held on with some chain. But it actually is really useful. We keep, like I said, the grill over in this area. We can cook. I usually put food 
use it as my cooking station and or serving station. Right now, because we're in Florida, all of our plants are off the ground because I don't want ants and I don't want too many of the Florida bugs in here. So this is my, more of my baby. These ones sit on the dashboard, the smaller plants that are being nursed to get bigger. And then this is my grill. Like I said, I welded this. Um, it's crooked as hell now because my husband tried to fix it with a sledgehammer and it's now even more crooked than it was when it started. Okay. Continuing on, we have our uh, extra water outlet. So that's a gravity fed um, outlet for our 200 gallon fresh water delivery. So kids can come out over here anytime, get a fresh drink of water. We can water the dog, water plants if we don't have any other needs, you know, better water to use for that. Uh, we cut, uh, cut off some PVC just to hang our uh, fishing poles, just like that. And they ride like this. Made a notch or two where necessary for some of them. And then we just strap it down with two little cleats up top and it rides clean like that. So you can see we got the uh, platform up top. We do have a reverse camera. We got to kind of put together, point it up right now to get some of the fog out of it. We've been known to get some humidity inside the lens. I also had a small satellite dish that used to hook onto there for cable. We've upgraded since, but I haven't found a need to pull it off to remove it, which makes a hole. So I'm just gonna leave it there. We'll see what happens. Um, this is a bike rack that's actually built for like a small car, four-door sedan. And we found that if I mounted it onto this lip, pipe clamped it up there, it's held, uh, what, four bikes for going on three years of travel now. Uh, window wall shaker, plexiglass, we gotta upgrade that. Coming down, you can see this holds me well enough. Uh, this opens up as well, holds the kayak paddles for the kids under there, which you can tell need a good cleaning. Comes down, we have a portable greenhouse that we lay flat all the way length of here, wrap up a couple other things in there, ratchet strap it down, doesn't go anywhere, never had a problem. All right, coming around the back uh, area, uh, we've got our two 50 foot fully retractable Clothes lines. Uh, we just hang our hoses here when we're not moving because this is our H2O water inlet. So I'll hook up to whatever water source we got, put an inline filter in, we're good. This is a six tiered uh, drying rack right next to essentially our shower space. These two points right here come out and uh, 90 degree to make a nice square shape. So you protect it underneath here, cloth falls down. This gets up currently set to like 122 degrees Fahrenheit. So it gets nice and hot. Get our 220 amps. The bottom one is for generator power. Top one's for AC ground or shore, shore power. Cable TV, 50 amp, and then our water inlet. So key thing we tell the kids over here, don't splash. If you don't carry your own tools, or if you do, here's how I'd recommend it. I use Pelican cases and I, I label them one, two, threes to the order I mostly use them. Uh, obviously due to accessibility, carry two uh, generators there that can push nearly 30 amps when in parallel, which was more than enough power to power everything at, on this bus at once. Uh, screws and bolts and accessories and a chainsaw. Now I carry the chainsaw because we've run across areas that are like mm, stuff's in the way or people need help. And I'm like, hey man, I got a chainsaw. I can help you trim this up. So it's that, that bartering system. Like you can park somewhere and barter your stay, which we do often. My wife and I sometimes sit over here. So I dropped in a 110. This folds down into a nice table. And then from there, we can plug in uh, a speaker, radio, sit on each side of it, have coffee and chit chat. Okay, so my brother found a U-Haul Master motorcycle mount, which is not designed for this dirt bike, but you know, it's like the schoolie world made it happen. We welded a Reese hitch onto the front, drilled some holes too for some uh, Python cabling to keep that bike secured and locked so we don't have theft or as easy. And yeah, this is what we've been teaching the kids how to learn how, how to ride a motorcycle. If you can have a plan, have a plan. But also there are so many opportunities out there for work camping, for work, for parking, for trading, like Bartering. there's so many opportunities out there. If you can, and if you really want to do this lifestyle, like I'm telling you, go for it. It's been so healing and so My relaxing and enjoyable for our family to spend so much quality time together. I have a stipend from Veteran Affairs Administration for my time in service as a service disabled veteran. Uh, that is super helpful in this lifestyle, you can ask anybody. On top of that, to help knock down the debt that we've accrued through the years, like I, I feel most people have in their young adult lives, I started my own LLC 
and I do government contracts on the side. And me, I don't work. <laughs> I stay at home uh, as a stay at home mom, work at home mom. So if you want to find us, our Instagram is The Beehive Family. We're also on YouTube as The Beehive Family, and that's spelt like that. <laughs> the beehive family thank you for coming and seeing our bus and visiting with us and i've got to cook dinner so yeah bye yeah